Hello and welcome to the Old Boys Podcast, a podcast by film nerds for film nerds. I'm your host, Dan. And he's one of those guys who will get penetration. And that is Jared, and he's not a host anymore. He is oh, okay. a lackey. He is he is the one who operates the soundboard. Uh, uh, are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? So it is up to me to carry this entire show <laughs> for the rest of the time. Um, You're not a doctor. You're a big, fat fuck. Long time listener to the show will get that. Everybody else will be like, I'm turning this off right now. So you might as well yep. just introduce you, Jared. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I've, I've been better. Me too. <laughs> I'm not doing too great. But, uh, so, oh, actually, I do have something to talk about. Oh. So I watched the first Halloween in preparation for watching the new Halloween. And? Um, Holds uh, up? Yeah, I don't Holds think it Holds up does. like a... <laughs> I I don't think it does. Um, the movie is a lot of walking. Oh, yeah. It's so much walking. It's incredible. It's, it should just be called Walking in One one Soundtrack, the movie. Whee! And, man, that the, the soundtrack was kind of getting on my nerves. It's it's. Uh, I feel ashamed to say this, but I was not enjoying the film when I watched it. Wow. Yeah. I, I loved all the scenes with the, the doctor. Anytime he was on screen talking, that was really good. The what's the main lady's name with the three names? Laurie Strode. Whatever her name is. Jada Pinkett Smith or whatever her name is. Jamie Lee Curtis. Laurie Jamie Lee Strode, Curtis. yes. <laughs> don't say her actor name. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis, yes. I found her annoying in this movie. I don't know. Get ready to find her really annoying in the next movie. Yeah. I'm uh, my girlfriend wasn't too impressed either, and I kind of felt had she never seen it before? She had never seen it. She didn't even know like what the dude, the bad guy looked like or anything. Wow. Michael Myers. And um, I kept trying to justify the film to her, and I was doing it so much that she's like, you've already told me this. She's like, stop telling me this. Well, I mean, it's not for I was everybody. really defensive of the movie, and I'm like, why am I defending this film? Okay, so horror movies to me are just beautiful, and I can watch them no matter what. Uh -huh. And I think that film holds up a shit ton better than um, the original Star Wars. And that's that's saying a pretty big blaspheme for movie nerds everywhere. Hey, movie nerds, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> um, Hello, goodbye. Hello. So I understand the cultural impact and the, the great significance of this film. It was a low-budget movie. They literally defined a genre, and everyone copied off of this film to make slashers. I understand that. I don't know if it was the first one, yeah. but it was the one that popularized well, no, it, it, it. I would argue that it is the first teen slasher that like started it all. But the first horror movie that really set the standard came before Halloween, which is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I guarantee uh -huh. you, go watch that again. That one fucking holds Oh, water yes, I have seen that um, a, a, a year or so ago, and that movie is still really fucking good. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I still want to see the new one. And now it's kind of fun because I watched the trailer and seeing the first film again, it was like, oh, reference, reference, reference. Yeah, <laughs> like, I got all these references. Here's here's my beef with it. That's all it is. Oh, no. I mean, you you might find it a little bit better. But to me, that's all it was because I got kind of I got kind of tired in the movie, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I really no. do want to go see Suspiria, though. Suspiria looks oh, fuck pretty yeah. fucking amazing. I like They turned it into an art house film. And I hated the first one. So now oh, I'm like, like it? yeah, I, I did not like the first episode, but now I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, Tilda Swinton is going to kill everything. Yeah. She plays an old man. She yeah, plays she the plays, only male character Yeah, she in plays the movie. three characters. <laughs> fucking crazy. Uh, anyway. She's the best. She is. So here's, here's my story. Um, sure. Oh God, I've been watching movies. Okay, so guys. Dan, have you been watching movies? This is what happened. I watched a couple of good movies over the last couple of days. The first one was not that good. Never mind. I didn't watch too much. God damn movies. it. <laughs> Dan. So there's a, there's a film called The Other Side of the Door. Okay. And in and of itself, that is a horrifying title. Like, Okay, wait, Dan, Dan, Dan. Do you get to find out what's on the other side of the door? Yes, of course. It's part oh, of the plot. Cool, 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 cool. But like the that. idea, like, the other side of the door, like, what is it? Mm -hmm. it? It just evokes this feeling of, oh. Anyway, yeah. it has the, the girl, the, the wife who died from The Walking Dead very early the on. The boy who lived? Yes, the wife who died. 
She she plays a, a lady who has two kids and her husband is in India and they work in India. So her two kids, like one of they they're in a car accident. One of them dies. The other one she saves, and the the maid that lives in with them says, "What if I told you that I could you know you could talk to your son one last time and and you know." say bye and okay she's she's like okay i'll do it and then so basically she goes and does it it's a whole ritual demons and she's basically she says whatever you do don't open the damn door and what does she do but open the damn door right so she goes and she talks yeah so she hears the voice she she's like okay i'm sorry but i have to go and then the kid's like oh but but mommy they're gonna kill me and then she freaks out, opens the door, and then her whole fucking rest of the movie is she's haunted. It was it was okay for the concept, and the ending was pretty good. I did like the ending a lot. But outside so of that, wait, it was kind of boring. If she's talking to this dead loved one, and the dead loved one's trying to trick them into opening the door, is it even their loved one, you know? is it? Well, like it turns the... out not to be their loved one, because whenever the loved one comes back, he's like a ghost that haunts the family, and it gets more and more bad as it goes on. So it's really weird, the mythos. That's interesting. Now, the next one I saw, I really, really, really enjoyed. It's a okay. new take on the werewolf, which I, will, I wouldn't even call it a werewolf. The film is called The Wildling or Wildling. And just imagine it as a werewolf, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's just a, it's a wild animal thing that grows where the wildlings are. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that yeah, movie. yeah, basically. <laughs> anyway, this film has Brad Dorif in it as a guy. Yes, who fuck yeah, as is every named character. Daddy, yeah, his name is Daddy. Appropriate, right? His name is Daddy. Yeah, his name is Daddy, and he is fuck yeah. Um, he's fathering this child who is named Anna. And Anna's not allowed to leave her room because the wildling might come out and get her. And she tries to leave the room once, and it shocks her. So you learn throughout the film that basically she is the wildling, and he's, like, holding her against her will, but, like, being a kind father so she doesn't realize it. And she, he's sterilizing her with essentially, like, you know, poison of for testosterone. Or not testosterone, estrogen. So he's not letting her become a woman. And... He eventually feels guilty about it. He shoots himself, but he's still alive. Oh. And she gets out, basically. And she starts turning into this wild thing. And at the end of the movie, he's like, well, I fucked up. Now I'm out of the hospital. I got to kill you now. And it, it, that's the whole movie. And it, it was really, really well done. Whoa. I was very impressed. I, I what is recommend this called it. Again? The, uh, it's called Wildling. It's oh 2018. My God. I very much recommend it. A um, new Brad Dorf movie oh, where yeah. he's like the main character. Well, he's not in the, a lot of the movies. He's in like the first twenty minutes and then the last twenty minutes, I'd say. Okay, but that sounds fucking cool. It was pretty awesome. And then the next one I'm going to watch, I haven't watched it yet. Is Hereditary? So I'm oh, getting up there. Good. You mean the greatest horror movie ever made? Well, we'll see you <laughs> next time on the podcast when we talk about it. All jokes aside, that is probably one of my favorite horror movies. It's got to be at least top five, top wow. three. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm overhyping it. It's really fucking No, I good. mean, I, I, I don't really care too much about hype. The next thing I need to talk about is this wedding video I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was my, funny. You were texting me about this. My, my dad, like, went to his cousin's wedding, and they kind of Your dad lived... also plays daddy, right? Yes, my dad also He's plays daddy. daddy. He's big daddy. He's <laughs> big daddy. He goes to his cousin's wedding, and they live in, like, backwoods Mississippi, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. So not really anything special. My dad films the whole thing on his GoPro as a Question. last minute thing. Is he just holding a GoPro? He is is it on his head? holding a GoPro. No, it's not on his head. It's just he's holding the GoPro. How do I know <laughs> this? Because his fingers constantly get in the way of the lens. No. So I have to edit out all the times that his fingers get in the way of the lens, and I have to make it make sense, too, which is very, very hard to do. I eventually did, like, I cut out a good portion of what it was. And to to his defense, whenever you are filming on a GoPro, unless you have the app on your phone, you can't see what you're filming because there's no, you know, there's no screen yeah. to show it. I, it makes sense. But then other things start to bother me. So, like, my dad is a church-going individual. And before the service, they start singing this hymn. Uh Uh-huh. A hymn to which he starts humming along behind the camera. No. So you don't just have, you know, the sound of the actual (laughs) film. You have very faintly my dad humming a little (laughs) off-key. 
That's hilarious. I would keep that in. It was so funny. I had like I tried to get edit that would be a lot the of intro. it. Out, but like it was like it, it's just it, editing editing a film that is filmed by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but they're doing their best anyway, and they're not thinking about it. It just I, I texted you, it reminded me of like the Miami connection where how like we always <laughs> talk about how this editor is this unsung hero because he made something out of garbage. He studied a book. <laughs> the guy from Miami Connection. He studied a book about how to make films and actually made an okay kind of watchable movie. <laughs> but the editor is not that same guy. The editor like had to That's take true. all the film and be like, what the fuck? So, th so that was how I felt. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So that was, that was the most interesting experience. And it kind of made me look forward to my sister's wedding. Cause I'm filming that in December. Uh -huh. And I'm like, Oh God, with a I'm GoPro. Gonna, I, no, I'm not going to, I mean, I always have a GoPro, but I never like, it's just B roll B roll for GoPro. That's what you do. Here's the first issue with that. What? So, Number one, is your dad a dad? Yes. Yes, that's the problem. <laughs> Dads don't know anything. Like technology, they're like, oh, what is this newfangled and then Okay, and then the biggest thing about this, why I was so kind of angry about it, is he gave, my mom gave me this footage. She's like, here, I need you to do this. Work your magic with it. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll see what I can do. You saw the horror. I'm like, when do they need this by? And she's like, well, she's been waiting since the middle of September. I'm like, what the fuck? So, like, it kind of put, like, a a, a, a rush on That's me. Unfair. So Yeah, I had to get it done really quick. And I was talking to my mom about it. My mom's like, yeah, I think dad realized how much it was terrible. So that's why he didn't give it to me until that week. And then mm. I gave it to you. I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Just put a disclaimer on it saying a lot of this wasn't good. This is the best I could do with it. <laughs> like, just something. No, are like, you hey. kidding? Like, I made, it, I made it as good as I can. And then I can bitch about this forever. The people who, who <laughs> did the wedding themselves... Uh huh. Whenever you walk down, whenever the bride walks down the aisle and then she gets to the front and the song is not done yet, typically in a wedding, you cut the song off. But the person they had doing the sound was not a DJ. It was just a regular person. So the bride walks down the aisle, gets to the front <laughs> and stands there for another two minutes till the song ends. Two minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Holy shit. No one was like doing the cut motion with no. their neck like cut nobody. The music. It's ridiculous. So that that's it. That's all I need to talk about. It was ridiculous. Mm, mm, so mm. let's talk about this film that we watched, Jared. This A film. This film. Yes, yes, yes. I believe it was called The Night Comes for Us. Yes, The Night Comes for Us. Why did I say it that way? The Night Comes for Us. <laughs> uh it is a 2018 film. So the the director is also the writer. Did he? What was the other famous? He did the raid, right? No, or am I thinking wrong? The actor who is the main actor in this was the star of the raid, which is why oh. I got the fucking hot. You this were confused, movie. okay? Because you were telling me that before. I was like, wait, did he do the raid? No, it oh was, no, it, uh, it's, it's, Gareth Evans did the raid. Yeah, Gareth Evans, but the guy, um, Joe Talisman or whatever, he's the guy who's in the raid. Joe Talisman. I think that's his name. <laughs> Uh, Taslam, I think. Taslam. But yeah, I love, Taslam. I love Talisman. I'm yes. Joe Talisman. I'm Joe Talisman. Um, Jackie so... Chan is going to take me in his next movie. <laughs> the Lost Talisman. Uh, it, Dan, I would like for you to uh, please explain the plot without getting too much blood in yourself. <laughs> oh, that's uh, very simple. There's blood everywhere. All right, ready? Here we go. Bullshit. Blood. More bullshit. More blood. A little bit less blood, bullshit, dude. but and then a shitload of blood. So much blood that the shit from the last bullshit comes into this blood and mixes yeah. in with that blood. And that creates new bullshit. <laughs> bloody bullshit. <laughs> oh, and if you got bloody bullshit, you need to see your doctor. Hey, guys, here's the deal. I'm not going to give you a play-by-play -play of this um, movie because it's so fucking forgettable. And I'm going to intro with my first impressions. This film was bad. Damn. It was bad Shots. simply because, so Timo Jajanto is how I would pronounce it. Yeah, name. okay. Timo Jajanto. He's got a couple J's in there. So, oh, and it's not Joe Taslim, is it? No, it's Iko. Iko Uweis is the guy from The Raid. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's him. He's cool. Yeah, he is cool. But whenever you say Iko Uweis, you're like, holy shit, that's the guy from The Raid. The Raid was fucking high octane, insane violence like you saw in this movie. 
mm-hmm. with story that's just kind of sprinkled into it. Like it's it's so well crafted of a movie. The raid two, not so much. It's very campy compared to the first raid, but the first raid is so good. Now yeah. this movie this movie that we call The Night Comes for Us tries to make it sentimental. Why is it called that? Because it's alluding to the fact that like, you know, the, the shady dealings go down at night. I guess. There was there was know. there was a bout of dialogue that had to do with that. Was there? Yeah. I totally missed it. Anyways, so, go ahead. I'm sorry. My issue with this film is because I was so I'm like, oh, Eco, it's going to be like this martial arts film because if you look at the fucking title, the movie poster, it's all martial arts. It's ridiculous. There's just so much story that I don't care about because the pacing, you said this off air, which was hilarious. The pacing in this movie is insane. And I'm assuming you are meaning what I'm about to say, which is it's very, very slow until it's not anymore. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So my first impressions of this movie, Dan, in my first impressions, I'm going to be asking you a question. This is highly unorthodox. I know hopefully the courts will allow it. Hopefully. Hopefully. What is the most violent movie you've ever seen? The Raid, probably. It's The Raid? Okay, I have not seen The Raid. Does this come close? Does The Night Comes for Us come close? This one is pretty... Like, I I may have to watch them side by side, because there was a lot of pra- pretty fucking crazy shit in this movie. But this is coming from this new kind of Indonesian action thriller um, genre, where yeah. it's like, specifically from Indonesia... Where it's just hyper, hyper violent stuff. And you're like, oh my god. I almost want to coin it like this is a new genre of film. It's like blood foo or something. Yes, exactly. It's kung fu, but where everyone it, is covered in blood. Basically gore, what it is, is, is it's like imagine uh, Ricky O, the story of Ricky, but yes. not funny. And, actual, and not campy. Not campy. Just like very serious. Like, holy shit, did I just watch that? Yes. So usually when you watch a film this hyper violent, there is a form of campiness. Or uh, some way to at least detach yourself from what's happening. This and movie takes all of the violence yeah. very fucking seriously. Yeah, and, like, and they are very good at doing that. Very good at doing that. Yeah. Yeah. If you enjoy seeing like extremely violent action movies, you'll probably love this film. For me, it was very hard to watch. Um, some of the I scenes liked... I'm like, oh. They... And a lot oh. of them go on for way too long. And it's just... A lot of like the cutting with the knives, oh, see, especially well, then, cutting on the neck. For you may out, not man. like the raid then, because the raid. Just imagine this movie, but with no bullshit. It's just <sighs> constant insane. Because the whole idea of the raid is like there's a drug. Like he 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 he's a police officer, special forces. He he's um, about to um, come up on this drug infested apartment, and then mm. they uh, catch on to it, and it's up to him and his squad to just clear the whole place out. They find out, I think, that there's, like, a hostage situation or something, and they have to save everybody. And it is, it's it's just balls to the wall from one start to the next, just violence. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to see that film. The Raid 2 takes it and makes it more campy, which is why I didn't appreciate it as much. But mm. The Raid 2 has better cinematography. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm wondering if there's a crossover between, like, maybe the choreographer, the fight choreographer in, in this film. I don't know. Because there's a well, lot of I interesting say that setups. Eco Uwai, so I'm not really sure. Let me look. This movie is like a really bloody Jackie Chan film. Because there's so many interesting, unique ways that the characters fight. And they use the environment to their advantage, which I enjoy. But it's, like I said, really gory and fucking crazy. So yeah, it's like, like, like we've been saying before, it's like, it's like almost a new genre where it's, it, you just imagine you, your favorite martial arts movies, but just make them hyper violent. And that's Cover where all the everything in red. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, not like, like fake, like paint red. Like they're trying to make it as realistic as possible. There's a scene where a little girl stabs a man with a knife, like four times in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> In rapid succession. And I'm like, what is going on? This girl is forever deranged. She, this girl has seen like over a hundred people be killed. I mean, is that safe to say? Yeah. <laughs> Not a cop in the film. So, okay. At my Not actual first impressions. One. This movie is, it's okay if you, if you just want to see hyper-violent fighting. If you're not a big fan of that. Or you, you care about pacing or plot or or what's going on in the story or who these characters are or what's happening. 
uh, you're going to be upset. <laughs> There's a lot of weird moments in the film where I just, I didn't understand what was going on and I would rewind it and watch it again. And I'm like, that information did not help me. I don't, I don't, which is why I keep saying that it's just what's all happening. bullshit. It is crazy bullshit. The there's so much like it's boring to me. Like the if you if if you go in expecting the raid, the film is inc- incredibly boring because it's like two hours long, mm-hmm. and the fights feel few and far between. Even though once you get into them, they don't stop ever. And also, there's just so many things that are just never explained that you want explanations to. Oh yes, like so. Okay, uh, the main crux of the movie is Ito, who I think is the main character. I'm not sure. He's one of the seven C's, which is a triad. It's the six C's. Six? Whatever. Yeah, six C's. Uh, six C's. It's one of these gang members that run this uh, cartel in uh, the triad crime family or whatever. And Ito and his friend Arian or whatever, who's basically Vegeta. He's just Vegeta. Yeah. And uh, they're they're like boyhood friends who had their own gang, and they decided, hey, we're going to go try to join the the triad gang. Which is this strike is, it out on their this own. This is where that one bout of dialogue comes out about the night is when we're going to do our bit business. Oh, okay. I yeah. guess I don't know. So, anyways, they both kind of start rising through the ranks. One of them becomes one of the actual seven C's, like one of the bosses. The other one, I guess, is getting high up, but he's not there yet. And he's, like, jealous of the other because, you know, he reached Super Saiyan before he did. And he's like, fuck you. I want to reach Super Saiyan. So he's in the hyperbolic time chamber trying to, to, to fucking work it out. And this, and this dude, he's got all the power. And he's like, you know what? Um, I've killed one too many child for my taste. So I'm going to betray the triad because they, they go to a fishing village, the bad guys. And they're murdering all these people because I guess they were skimming off some of their profits of this drug ring they have going on so they decide to wipe out the entire village instead of just taking care of the people who fucked them over and there's a little girl this is the very beginning of the film and she is watching her parents get killed so he he betrays his teammates kills them all is a huge massacre and then takes the little girl now and then the whole rest of the story yes do you know anybody who has betrayed the triad um not any that have lived that's what i was gonna say exactly you don't know anybody who's betrayed the triad. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the whole rest of the movie is about him trying to keep this little girl safe as a form of redemption for himself, which I can get behind oh, the story. Wait a minute. Wait okay. A minute. Yes. I so get. what you're saying is this whole movie is pointless? Well, I think the the villain's motivation is pointless. You mean his Vegeta to his Goku? You mean now Vegeta's motivation doesn't make sense. The villain. Is the one with the longer hair. Aryan is the guy who's still in the gang. Who he beats up everybody at the club. But that's the that's Vegeta. Yes, Aryan is Vegeta. So the one who's in control of Vegeta, your one is the the villain. Ito is the the guy who he calls the big brother. Yeah. I think he's the hero. Right. The guy who. So who who's the villain? The is what I'm asking. The villain would be, I guess, um, that one boss member. So Chen the, Wu? the one who's who? Yeah, the one who's controlling Aryan. Yes, yeah, the guy who's one of the Seven Seas dudes. So we have the Seven Seas, we have the Triad, we have the Lotus, which is only brought up one time. Which is what I want to know more about because they were the best part of the fucking movie. Yeah, they're like an elite band of female assassins that are fucking cool. It's like straight out of Kill Bill or one of those old kung fu movies. They're really cool. We never find out anything about them. They just show up randomly sometimes. There's so many characters that show up where you're like... Who are you? And then before I can even finish that sentence, they're dead. <laughs> and they looked really important. Have you looked at the <laughs> trivia for this movie yet? No, I haven't. Okay, so I found one. Like, there's only three, and the first one is extremely interesting. Okay. So this movie is the first Indonesian film produced by Netflix. Yet in Indonesia, one of the largest internet and network providers uh, called Telkomsel banned and blocked Netflix from their service. Interesting. So it's the only one that Netflix has ever produced, and nobody in Indonesia can watch it. Well, if you think about it this way, there's a lot of English in this movie, too. Yeah. So maybe they had it targeted towards a Western Probably, audience already. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad, though. They don't get Netflix. Yeah. Netflix is fucking rad. There's so many other things they could ban besides Netflix. <laughs> yeah, like porn. Or Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have Ito. He, um, he shows up at this apartment of this lady who... Do you know the relationship between Ito and this woman? I don't know. No. I'm actually asking you. Okay, I, I didn't know if it was his sister, his lover. It could have been anyone. 
I mean, he shows up there and she's like, I haven't seen you in three years. We all thought you were dead. And he's like, I'm back now, baby. And I'm ready to make love. And she's like, no, I'll never do that. And she's like, who is this kid? Because I'm your sister. Yeah, maybe. And then uh, his friend shows up. Fatim or Fatim? Yeah. It, Fatty? It's, it's uh, Fati, who I kept reading as Faith as a subtitle. Yeah. So I might call, just call him Faith. Then you have Bobby, who is uh, Bobby he's is a leg. my second favorite character. He is a pretty amazing character. Who's your first? The Lotus, the Lodi. Oh, the Lotus women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby is pretty great. Uh, is he supposed to be an American? Because they keep referring, referring to him as the he's white guy. He's definitely not a. He, he. I think he's Indonesian, but he's the most white looking one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I he didn't seem like a white guy to me. I don't know. But Bobby was fucking rad. Um, he was a really like disheveled. Wearing like a dirty hoodie and a beard, and he's like limping, and he doesn't look like he can fight at all. But of course, he's going to be fighting crazy. And and then you have the intern, which is that third guy they needed for the film, so he can take the little girl away when all the action happens, and they yep. die later. He has no co- <laughs> his his main character trait and motivation is he is a fanboy of Ito. He he's heard of Ito and <laughs> once aspires to be like him. And I don't even know if he has a name. <laughs> so, like, these are all members of his old crew before he joined the, the triad. And they all come to him. And Ito keeps saying, I didn't want to involve all of you. While explicitly going out of his way to involve all of them in and then the triad mess. Vegeta slash Arian comes in at the very end and says, this is all your fault. And then you have to agree with him because it is. Yeah, it's absolutely all his fault because he got all of his friends, his old friends killed. Oh, we're going to talk about Vegeta's motivation because (laughs) it doesn't make any sense. We're also going to refer to his Aryan as Vegeta, by the way, for the rest of the movie (laughs) because I think it's funny. So we have this weird setup. Did this make sense to you why Ito had to go to the butcher? No, other than to get a fucking cool ass fight scene at the butcher shop. For some reason, Ito is like, this butcher guy has money that he owes me. I'm going to go get that money. You guys take care of the little girl, even though I told you to not be involved. And they all stay at the apartment while he goes. There is an insane, like, just the most gore you can think of at this fight scene. It, it's it's pretty cool. At this point, I'm, like, still into the film. There, there's a certain moment later on where I'm just like, I can't even handle this movie which anymore. Is the it's film, too much. Which is the one where he, like, he slams a guy's face into a bottle. Is that in the butcher shop? Oh, that's at the club. Oh, so oh, we did skip that. So there's a club scene with um, Vegeta. He's working for the triad. This guy he refers to as Big Brother, who is, I guess, the boss of this. And he's, like, at the nightclub. Yeah. And he is treating Vegeta the way you would never want to treat Vegeta because he's Vegeta. Yeah. And uh, he's demanding, like, Bobby Bottle service. He's like, keep bringing me these expensive bottles of Chardonnay or whatever. And he's, he's yelling at him. And then uh, he smashes a bottle over the boss's head. And this is the best fight scene in the film. I liked it. The choreography... The choreography. <laughs> the choreography is fantastic. Well, okay. Here's where I'm going to disagree. Sure. Because this is the other thing that I wanted to bring up. Thank you for bringing up this. Compared to the raid and the raid 2, the choreography. Mm. The choreography. You can't the, say it either. The choreography in this film <laughs> is. The Corey Feltman of this film. Is so placed. It's extremely noticeable. Yeah, I agree. But I feel like in this in this scene. I was the most into what the film was giving me. The further it went, especially later on when we get to the Lotus fight at the end, uh-huh. the difference of night and day of like, were they getting lazy? What's going on? I don't know. The film, I think, does a lot of speeding up the action. Yeah. And it wasn't very noticeable until you, you watch, maybe because you watch it for a while and you're like, oh, I'm really starting to notice the speed up. Yeah. And uh, and when they have some of the female fighters later in the film, I was very noticeable where I was just like, am I watching the film on fast forward? This seems silly. But um, this club fight where he is just beating the shit out of a dude, he like slams this guy's head into a pole and the pole vibrates and he grabs it. I was like, that was kind of cool. And um, he stabs the champagne bottle into the guy's mouth and the blood come, like, comes out of the bottle. Yeah. That was neat. Um, and it's the, it's the least violent of the fight scenes and the most of just straight up hand to hand combat. Yeah. And that's what I love. I love that shit the most. 
uh, it seems to me like you weren't too into it. I just like the the champagne bottle in the mouth. The that champagne. Was cool. I, I had so, never seen that before. I mean, I, I can tell you a couple of scenes that like I really, really enjoyed watching the violence to. Well, we'll get to them. Okay. Because uh, I'm going to go down the list of all the fight scenes. Whatever, and if I miss it, bro. <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I wanted to talk about Chen Wu, the Seven Seas guy, and his motivation. Because we just had Vegeta kill 15 people and a crime boss in the triad. Yeah. And then immediately after that, Chen Wu approaches Vegeta and he's like, hey, Vegeta, um, I want to make you one of the seven. I keep seeing seven. I'm just going to, I don't know. One of the C's bosses. And he's like, I'm going to offer you all of this. All you have to do is go kill the old boss who is Ito. And he's like, okay, sure. Like, why is, why is Chen Wu offering him this when this character repeatedly fucks up? Who Vegeta fucks up? Yes, he keeps killing their own men. He's like, I'm going to offer you one more chance. Oh, I see what you're saying. And then later on in the film, when he's like, all of, like, all my friends are dead now, and you killed them all. Why should I even keep working for you? He's like, well, if you do, you're still going to get all that money, and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, why did you do all of this? He's like, well, th- this is the explanation for all this violence in the film. He's like, the six C's are going to show up today, and they need chaos in order to meet secretly. That is the explanation of him orchestrating this this huge hit because it's revealed that Chen Wu actually does want all of these old gang members to die. I guess because they were dealing drugs at one point and they were mad at them, but that was like years ago. Right. So he's using the gang members against themselves to to kill all of the other gang members. I don't it's, it's so it's like what is the reason? What's the real reason? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, like I wasn't really necessarily paying attention to this film too much because the minute that I had to, the minute is the minute I got bored. <laughs> because yeah, it, yeah, just, yeah. it was just, it was not, I don't know. I feel like the narrative and like the whole story behind it was not well written. No, something it's about so it, just confusing. Like, it, well, it was confusing, but then just something about it just took me out of it immediately. It's like, why, why do I care about this? Mm-hmm. No, I agree. After like a champagne bottle went into somebody's face. Like, let's talk more about that. The, the champagne bottle? Oh, you mean the fights? Yeah. Okay, so... No, no, what I'm saying... Well, no, I'm not saying, like, let's talk about it now. I'm just saying, like, why isn't that part of the story more? You know what I mean? The actual fighting? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's and who weird. they're fighting? No, yeah. I agree, because, like I said, there's only one line they give to justify why hundreds of people are dying and no cops are showing... No, not even... There's not even a line to show that there's no cops are showing up. Just the reason why there's 100 people dying and... They just, nobody cares. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, why would they invest so much manpower to kill one dude and nobody uses any guns? And when they do, they're always failures. <laughs> just shoot him. Just shoot this guy. I don't know. So, uh, the club scene's over. Um, the butcher scene. I don't know if, is there any highlights from that you want to talk about? I can't uh, think of any. Throwing gigantic cow meat at people as blocking people. There was a moment where the guy, this guy breaks a cow bone and stabs it into two different people. That was kind of cool. Now, if I were Ido, Goku, Go, Gokitu, here's what I would do. Instead of involving my friends by leaving the girl, I would take the girl and use her as a weapon of redemption. Like a physical weapon? Like yeah. flailing her around? Yeah, like by her feet. Just like, you know, one-hander. That could work. Well, you know, if you just attach... A phone book, you rip up a phone book and attach it to all over your body, you're actually invincible. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you I know that. I did not really understand that. But this movie really helped me out with that. I'm, wh- what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to um, do that now. And uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah. And if you cover a small child with it, it's less real estate you have to cover. So she's going to be completely encased in at least a plus three, I would, I would give her, for all her roles. Plus three? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good armor. What, out of uh, what? Five? Her, base, her base armor value, which right. would be probably a zero. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Little girl base armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't have a lot of armor. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's not good at being a tank. Anyways, fuck. So he kills everyone there. Um, The crime boss there is like, you have no idea what, you're, what you did. Ha, ha, ha. And he gets his money or whatever. And then he jumps behind a desk because reinforcements show up. And these dudes with like in like SWAT clothes with these machine guns and they're firing at this wooden desk that he's hiding behind Uh and somehow he doesn't get shot and characters get arbitrarily shot in this movie. 
just all like they get shot, stabbed, cut, maimed, and you you can either die from a small cut in this film, or, or you can take a hundred bullets to the face and be fine. A hundred bullets to the face, and oh my god, the last fight between Ito and and Vegeta is just like my god, oh my fucking god, so disgusting. It's incredibly like. I don't know because there's there's a point where you have to suspend your disbelief, but like there's also a point where you don't have to anymore if you get my uh, mm-hmm. drift. Yeah, yeah, you should always suspend your belief in movies, but the longer a fight goes on and the more ridiculous it gets, I feel like you are allowed to just kind of take take a backpedal there and be like, yeah, seriously, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not going to do that. There's just only so long that these fight scenes can go on for, and they always overstay their welcome. If if you think of this movie as like a very hyper violent anime, um, it kind of helps your enjoyment uh, slightly, yes like and a very no, fast pace. Because hyper violent animes also have very good stories, typically. Yeah, usually there's something going on, and you kind of care. Like I really didn't care about the characters. Yeah, that's a big thing. I just. And so many get introduced, like that motorcycle woman. I still am not sure who the fuck that is. Yeah, I don't really know who she is either. I thought she was a cop. And she shows up to threaten Ito like three times and doesn't do it. Yeah, because if she was a cop, then she would have taken the girl to safety. Yeah. Instead of dropping her back off. She's an assassin. I think she was hired by the triad, but then decides not to do her job because the little girl is there, and then decides to help him because the little girl? I, it's very confusing. So he, Ito gets captured by these um, police officers? Yeah. Question and he's mark. put into a, pol- like a, a police vehicle. Why they've captured him, I don't know, because the whole point of the triad is they want to kill him, right? Right. They don't want to capture him. I don't get it. He, there's a pretty interesting fight in this armored van that ends with Ito throwing a, a live grenade in the van, the very van that he is in. How this works, I am, no one will ever know. <laughs> but he survives perfectly unscathed, a grenade going off in the van that he is in. Yes. While that's happening, what I thought was the most violent scene <laughs> is the first of apartment fight where... We have uh, Bobby is fighting, uh, Faith is fighting, and the intern is fighting. Yeah. And uh, Jesus Christ, they kill so many people. <laughs> and then, like, Bobby gets the shit beat out of him and, like, shot to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not um, really dead. The main thing I wanted to talk about with this scene that I can remember is, so they kill a lot of people. Right. Like, I feel like a lot of these fight scenes, the good guys kill, like, ten dudes and then more guys show up, wouldn't you think, hey, I'm a bad guy. But I just watched everyone I know get killed by one person. Maybe maybe I don't want to fight him in hand-to-hand combat. Well, and there was one moment where one of the criminals had enough sense to like hesitate, at least. But he yes. still fights him regardless. Yes, there's a lot of hesitation, and then... One at a time onslaught of just um, going through a meat grinder, basically, is what's happening to them. So this is where we're introduced to the blonde woman and the the ripoff from uh, Kill Bill, the, the, like the little schoolgirl lady or whatever. Yeah. They show up. They are, uh, I guess, lesbians. That's their character is because like one girl licks the other girl's hand or something weird. I don't know. And then they had to dismiss it very man-like yeah, because yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the guy the the crime boss went in the elevator he's like weirdo lesbians and oh, fucking weirdo lesbians and they all die of course yes. they get killed by a lady which is good so like three or four dudes run in after everyone's been killed they're about to attack the main characters right. then the two lotus women show up and here's where i'm confused why does the blonde lady kill her own men they have guns i don't know they could easily. Sh- There's so many times where characters. Well, no, have no, guns. no, no, no. So here's how I interpreted it. Because they don't first, use the guns. At first, I was like, "What?" Yeah, me too. Then, at second, I'm like, "Wait a minute! It's not her own." Then who that's, are they? That's a completely different. Like the Lotus are a completely different party. To basically everybody has been hired to kill Ito. Is how I took it. Okay. So they're just another party of assassins, is what I think. Well, yes, that makes sense, but later on we see the Lotus with 
the the six C's crime boss. He's there with them. They're like they're all together. So you think they will all be working together? I don't know. It, it well, didn't make maybe any they sense. were cops. I, I have no fucking idea. They didn't look like cops. They weren't in cops uniforms. It was very confusing. And um, eventually, Bobby dies. The intern dies. Um, and then we have the car park scene where they're kind of like in the garage. Right. This scene goes on for way too long. There's a huge fight scene. Uh, Vegeta shows up to save Faith. And then he's like, hey, we can start our own crime family together. We can leave the triad and I can be the new crime boss. And then Faith is like, I don't have any faith in you. <laughs> and then he like shoots his gun at him, at right. Vegeta. You know for sure it doesn't kill him because it cuts away. And then he gets in the car with the little girl, and then we have this scene of he has the little girl hide underneath a car, another car, I guess, while he does a suicide death, like driving into a bunch of enemies that shoot him, which mirrors what happens at the end of the film with Ito, who does the exact same thing. Right. What is the theme of like this? It's like this ultimate macho man machismo of, of like, I am a suicide samurai i'm gonna i'm gonna die with honor in battle like running into a hail of bullets well i feel like that's exactly what it is it's it is this like kind of final testament to manhood where it's like i'm going to you know live as a man and die as a man all the time yeah i just it was silly it it just gets so silly after a while when everything is that you know like just like think of the climax of a film but it's always climaxing (laughs) right your dick's not gonna work after a while okay well i mean (laughs) well and um, then you have all the bad guys are around the dead body. And then out of nowhere, a red light shows up, a sniper, and just starts killing all these dudes. And you're like, wait, is this um, Vegeta? Did he show back up with a gun? And no, <laughs> it's a motorcycle lady. Yeah. And I think she's one of the Lotuses. I'm not sure. It's confusing. She has this helmet that has like this weird night vision on it or something. And they do like a thing with her helmet. She never does that again, by the way. She kills all the people and then leaves. Yeah. What the fuck was with that? I don't know. (sighs) That's so infuriating. There's just so many other third parties that show up to kill random goons. And then they go, okay, I guess they're all dead. And they just walk away. You just have no fucking idea why they were here and what, what was going on. So she fucking leaves. The... Main character, I guess, Ito, finally shows up, which I kind of like this scene where he finally shows up. Everyone, all of his friends are dead. He's freaking out. And how they show this is they, they're just kind of playing music over him screaming, so you can't hear him talking. Yeah. And he's on the phone with his girlfriend's sister, and he's telling her all of their friends are dead. And it is kind of implied that maybe Faith was dating the girlfriend's sister while Ito was away. Yeah. And I thought there was going to be this love triangle between the three where it's like two men were in love with the same woman, and but one left. That would have been so interesting, and I had invented it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> but there was never any actual confirmation of, of that was like that was going on. There was one scene of Faith took that lady by the hand, like in a very like loving embrace, kind of like, oh, you, know, you have to go. I'm worried about you. And you're like, is this a brotherly worry (laughs) or are you have you been romantic with this lady unclear the movie decidedly does not want to tell you well i mean maybe that's to his credit because you did think about it in that way but then again why should you have to think for the movie i just think it would have been a a more interesting dynamic between faith and ito than they have with what Ito and Vegeta are going through where it's like, we're, we're, we're friends, but why are we trying to kill each other? Right. I don't really understand. Cause Vegeta's motivation, like I said, everyone's motivation in this film doesn't make sense. A lot of them. Um, he, he wants to become a gang leader, but yet also hates the gang and wants to destroy them, but also loves his friends and wants to run away and knows he's being betrayed by the gang, but still wants to work with them. It's like, he keeps flipping back and forth. Like every sentence he says, he's a he has a different motivation because he doesn't think that anybody cares. He's confused, <laughs> like me. Well, yeah. I I mean, for uh, let's just say that I didn't understand anybody's motivation, even Ito's. Like Fuck the whole no, dude. the whole like I'm gonna save this girl for redemption. Ugh. 
It was something. It's better than everyone guess, else's motivation. But at the same time, I'm going to put a lifetime worth of crime Mm-mm. all in the hands of this little girl. How did they even find where he was and the little girl in the apartment? I don't even know if that's explained. Technology. Um, technology. Uh, so the first apartment. No, this is the second apartment fight. Uh, motorcycle helmet lady shows up and fights Ito. He gets his ass kicked. This is kind of cool. Yeah. The strongest fighter in the movie gets his ass kicked by this girl. So that basically means she is the best fighter in the film. She never loses to anyone. So yeah. I have to assume she's the best fighter. She has several chances to kill him, decides not to because the little girl. And then she kind of disappears after learning Ito's motivation. Now, the confusing part is that she shows up later, almost like it was a continuation of that scene, right. with the gun pointed at him again. And she's like, I'm going to kill you again. And we're like, didn't we just do this? And then she goes, oh, you know what? I'm not going to kill you. And yeah. then he's like, okay, um, look after the little girl. I'm going to complete stranger. Right? <laughs> what does she do, Jared? She rigs the apartment with explosives and protects the little girl. And then for takes no the reason. little girl on a motorcycle to the drop-off point. Yep. Instead of taking the little girl to safety. Seriously. Like she literally drives the little... Okay, that, um, that scene pissed me off the most. Didn't he just escape yeah. like 50 feet away mm-hmm. from certain death? And then he goes and picks up the little girl and everything's fine. Even though they're 50 feet behind him. Yeah, Line seriously. of sight. How did he get to the the docks from where he was? He was covered in blood. He didn't drive. It looked like he walked there. So th- that's my point. Like, they were still there. And they're like, well, I guess he's picking up a little girl now. I can't do anything about it. Yeah, and they were right behind him. You're right. Yeah, that, that didn't make... Oh, it's so... It's exhausting. I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Okay, the motorcycle lady's motivation was, I am an assassin hired to kill Ito. She sees the little girl. She decides, I don't want to kill you because of little girl. But then she keeps saying, I'm going to kill you eventually, but I want to protect this little girl now. And then she even brings up the fact that if he were to separate himself from this little girl, she would probably be safer somewhere else, which happens at the end of the film. And then you get into the motivation. I know I keep saying motivation. This is my motivational speaking. <laughs> About Actually motivations. Positive. Yes. It's the motivation of the motivation. The gang leader, the crime boss. Chen Wu. He wants to kill the little girl, not for a witness, but to set an example of the fishing village. Because Never think mind. It make all it... the blood has already been spilled. Hundreds of people are now dead because Hundreds of Hundreds of gallons of blood have been spilled all over the floor. I don't know. If you're like a rival gang and you hear that... (laughs) Somebody's going insane and killing everybody? You're like, holy shit. Yeah, another gang has now lost at least 100 men. Don't you think they're maybe pretty vulnerable to attack or maybe you think less of them? Like, I would think less of them for that than just a little girl who escaped, who is probably not going to be a very good witness and she's going to go into foster care or something like wh- why do they want to kill her other than their secret motivation of having an excuse to kill ito's gang his old gang which every all of that seems so convenient and convoluted yeah that's exactly what it is um were there any fights you want to talk about dan i just want like so the way that one of the lotus ladies died is pretty cool sure okay how um like she uses this razor wire shit and she tried like the, the most inconvenient thing to fight with it's like that's thing you have to like sneak up on people with but she tries yeah. to use it as like a weapon of yeah, like she flips it around like yeah she uh, flips it around it just doesn't work but she gets it to where like i think she's fighting the motorcycle lady yes and it's she two gets on it, one yeah she gets it um wrapped around her neck because the motorcycle lady's a badass and then she, the motorcycle lady like hooks it onto a, a like a, a, a portable ac unit and then kicks mm-hmm. the portable ac unit out the window and i don't know that if you know cool. anything about um portable ac units but they're pretty heavy so <laughs> it like yanks her back against the wall and basically decapitates her a little bit so there was a cool um little dialogue before that where the lady is like you're gonna really regret this and she's like regret what he's like wearing white because she has a white shirt, and I'm like, well, that shirt's going to be covered in blood. Yeah. And it was, so thank you, movie, for that. The other, the blonde woman who's there, 
after seeing her lover be killed, she is very indifferent about it because she's evil. And uh, they have a interesting – it's okay. Like this is the fight where I was saying uh, things feel very sped up. And yeah. it kind of took me out of the fight. And I'm like this is very noticeably edited and, and, and reworked for our pleasure and I'm not enjoying it. But there was – and then there's some really graphic shit on the stairs where yeah. – Oh, the disembowel? Yes, there's that. But the thing I really had trouble with watching – is she stabs this woman with a knife into her forearm horizontally. Oh, and yeah. And then takes it from her elbow yeah. to her wrist all uh, the way up. I've never seen that in a film. I never want to see it again. It was pretty <laughs> It was hard. horrific. And then the last scene, the last fight between Ito and Vegeta, like they both yeah. stab each other in the face. With box cutters? With Well, no. Uh, Ito does it with like a nail in a wood and then um, – Vegeta does it with the the box cutter, and the way Ito yeah. wins is he like moves forward and breaks the box cutter with his cheekbone inside yes. his mouth, and then stabs the fuck out of Vegeta. It's so here's so the crazy. issue: like, okay, so that fight it started off okay, it got better, and then I was just bored of it. Yeah, I was like, when is this fight gonna fucking end? And Vegeta has his throat slit, right? He's bleeding out. Yep. They have this long monologue where he's like, brother, you've betrayed me. Bah! And he tries to shoot at him while he goes. He walks away because because Ito refuses to kill his friend, his best friend, even though they've just tried to kill each other throughout the entire film. And then after Ito leaves to go meet the little girl, which he knows where she is, apparently the drop off or whatever. I don't know. Vegeta is just magically better. Like yeah. he's not bleeding from his throat anymore. Did you notice that? Yeah. That happens a lot in the film where someone has a mortal wound and. And then the next scene, it is forgotten because the plot, like this new plot scene has to happen of like this new way they have. Usually it's not even plot. Forgive me. It's I've been mortally wounded. I should die. Oh, actually, I have a cooler way you should die. Let's go to this scene, the next scene, and you're fine now. And you're going to get killed right here. Is that okay? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. So what you're saying is it's like a little fucking third grader was yes. making the decisions. And And by cool, I mean... All of the characters, I've now realized, die from a hail of gunfire. All of the Triad gang members, not no, not Triad, all of the um, Ito's former gang, they all die from a hail of bullets. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if that means anything. No. Even when... <laughs> do you, what, do you, what do you think it would mean? I don't know. Even when Faith gets, he, Faith gets shot with a hail of bullets while driving a car, then has another scene where he's driving that same car again... And then gets hit by another hail of bullets, and then that time it finally kills him. <laughs> this movie has such ADHD that it forgets the scenes that have happened already where the characters have died, and they're like, oh wait, no, he's really not dead. So what you're saying is this movie could be an hour and a half and probably be better? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <laughs> could have been so much shorter. Oh man, oh, boy. And then talk about that ending. What about it? I mean, that unceremonious another hail of bullets driving into it where the, oh, the, yeah. the lead villain doesn't even get killed. That was so dumb. Like, do you think he's alive and they want a sequel or what's I mean, like, that's what's probably what is they're going for or just something along those lines. This fucking movie. All right. Well, what are your final thoughts? <laughs> God damn this movie. My final thoughts are if there is a sequel, no, please. No, <laughs> And I don't know. I'm just I, largely my biggest feeling is disappointment because I thought it was going to be like a fun movie. And like there was a lot of good, you know, violence in it. There was a bunch of hard to watch violence in it, but that's about it. Yes. Um, this movie is devoid of fun for just the way it was made yeah. and what they wanted to show. Unless you really enjoy hyper violence in, in a realistic way, not in a like trauma silly way this movie will not be for you because <laughs> it has nothing else to offer it's just every character every scene is covered in blood there's blood in almost every shot unless it's a flashback it's kind of crazy um, well i mean i and i didn't mind that so much i just it, it, what what really turned me off was the narrative like i said before it's yes. like it just doesn't tell a good story it, it, no. it loses you almost immediately if there's no violence on screen which at that point, why have anything but violence? There was some interesting camera trickery and some weirdness that they did. I enjoyed. Overall, I would not want to watch this movie again. 
it's just medio- mediocre in so many other areas. And and then even with the fighting, I wasn't enjoying it too much just because of how violent it was, which is a, is a personal preference. I realize that. Right. <laughs> but, uh, okay, um, well, I think, Dan, you have a movie you want to assign us. Oh, I don't like have always. any kind of movie at all. So, Jared, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something very unconventional to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I am in the process. Hold on, let me... We're going to have to... Dan is getting into a vehicle... He's covered in blood, and he's he's getting ready to drive into a, a group of Yakuza members who all have machine guns pointed at him. I don't know how to make that funny. Uh, his dick's out? I don't know. Is that funny? <laughs> okay, so this is not my idea, but it was a wonderful idea because whenever I teach um, film and during film. school, I actually do this during my class. So I nice. thought it would be pretty cool to do with the, the podcast. As a oh, movie so I'm reviewing. a child, I'm a student, and yes, you're going to no. teach me how to learn film. Great, yeah, thanks. So, this was Michelle's suggestion, so we can make her for that. <laughs> it's really good. Okay. I'm going to give you a series of music videos to watch oh, over no. the week, and you are going to watch them all, Dan, and we're going uh, to analyze them and talk about them. text me all of them, because... I'm putting them right now in your box. You better text so them. So what I would like you to do is copy and paste that into your um, your internets, I mean your yes, uh, sir. Word document. Yes, sir. So... What I'm going to say is I'm going to preface this by saying the first five are what are my favorite type of music videos. They're called one take music videos where the whole thing is shot in one take. Uh And I will say that number four is my favorite music video of all time so far. Oh, wow. Okay. It's fucking crazy. So here are the list of music videos. The first is going to be California by Wax. Next is Lonely Boy by The Black Keys. Okay. It's Five by Architecture in Helsinki. Okay. From Your Mouth by God Lives Underwater. That would be my favorite one. The Other by King Tough. And those are the five um, Those are the five one-take videos. The others are just like cool videos that I find very interesting formally, whether it be through mise-en-scene or whether it be through cinematography, things like that, editing. Um, uh-huh. So the next one is Smooth Sailing by Queens of the Stone Age. Elastic Heart by Sia. The Motherlode by Mastodon. Do not watch that one with anybody but yourself because it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. But disturbing? It, uh, no, it's just. So you've seen all these? Yes, I have. I'm well, gonna watch. I, like, I might, I watch I them might want to assign time. you some that that neither of us have seen. Like maybe ones that are really popular right now. Like oh, I, but I watch all music. this. I do watch. Have all you? This. Yeah. Like every week, I watch new music videos. The new ones that are popular. The uh, music videos are like my favorite things to watch, whether I like the music or not. That's why I'm doing. Well, maybe I'll watch some and we can talk about some. Okay, some yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So, the reason I say to the motherload is it's it's not sexually explicit, but there are. <laughs> it's you're gonna like the video. It, it, if anything, this is my okay. second favorite music video. It's pretty fucking great. All right. Um, the Strokes or Reptilia by the Strokes. Um, yeah. I don't give a fuck or IDGAF by Dua Lipa, and then mm. This Is America by Childish Gambino. Oh, I've definitely seen that. seen that. Yeah, dude, we're gonna fucking analyze the shit out of that. It's real good. It's really fucking good. It's really good. <laughs> it's fantastic. So those are the eleven that we're gonna do, and if you can throw any at me during the week, that's totally fine. Interesting. This is very interesting. Mm. Such a good idea. You've you've completely ruined this movie podcast. <laughs> well, it's still a moving image. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just kidding. It's only gonna take like forty minutes to watch all that. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, I'm totally down for it. Let's do it. Uh, and with that, guys, my God. My God. Wipe all the blood off your face. Oh, I gross. hope this is something. Uh, please find us where you're going to find us. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> I'm getting tired. So, Dan, you have the final word. Do you love blood, Jared? Is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> do you know what Dracula's favorite movie is? No, what is Dracula's favorite movie? Dracula, duh, dumbass. Wow. <laughs>